Hello and welcome to another weekly video tutorial. My name is Britt and I'll be showing you how to stamp with a sound object this week. So I'm going to be stamping with that voice cone that I got at a football game a little while ago. Latrice Murphy challenged me yesterday to find an object around my house and then stamp with it. And uh, we kind of challenged each other and she said that if I did it, she would do it. So this is my video and um, hopefully I can show you some new techniques here. Um, okay, so first I'm starting out by just masking off the back part of my card so I don't get paint on it. Now I'm using a Ranger paint dauber and this is in gold and kind of getting it going on my sheet, extra sheet of paper there. Then I'm just going to um, kind of ink up the mouth edge of the cone like that, and then stamp it down. And it left this really cool, like, imperfect circle. So I was pretty excited about that. I really like the look of it, so I decided to keep going. And I'm just going to do the entire front of the card now. So I just decided that I would eyeball everything. I'm not going to go through the hassle of measuring everything. And I'm just going to make sure it's always in an equal, it's always an equal distant distance from the two circles next to it. So there we go. And I'm going off the page a little bit here, but there you go. So there are my circles. And you can see I have that's what she said notes. I'm a big Office fan, so my friends made me those for Christmas last year. <laughs> Okay, so I decided that I liked the look like this, but I kind of wanted to add some more punch to it so that it showed up after I put other things on the card. So I'm going to go through with my paint dauber and very lightly um, kind of brush on some more gold paint, kind of making it like a dot effect. So there I've added all of this paint. and. The point was to make it look imperfect because I'm going to add things over it anyway, so we'll see where it goes. So now I'm taking this Bake Me a Cake set from Lawn Fawn and this Pyrus pad from Basic Gray. I love these colors, but they're not ones I usually gravitate towards, so I'm kind of struggling with them, and I decided that this would be a great card because it with the gold, it really makes it feel elegant, and this collection is definitely elegant. So I'm going to take my Bake Me a Cake stamp, and I kind of just throw it down on my table like that to let it naturally spring into shape, because it's kind of hard with ones that don't have the polymer across the middle to get them on straight. But I got it on the block all right, and I'm going to go ahead and stamp that and the rest of the five tiers on different pieces of paper, kind of judging what part of the pattern I want. And this is pretty much how I clean my stamps. I just stamp it like five times on a piece of scratch paper and then I'm good to go. I really don't wipe them off unless I'm using a Versa mark or something that's a little bit more annoying when I touch it next time. So this, I'm cutting out the cake pieces now. I believe this is this top tier. And I'm leaving a piece at the bottom so that I can slide it under and so that the edges don't show on all of them except for the bottom one. So I cut out the bottom one exactly how I wanted it to appear because I'm going to stamp this bottom of the cake plate and then have it sit right on top of that. So I have some craft cardstock here cut to two and one fourth inches wide and I'm just going to build my cake on that and then kind of trim it down to size. So I am putting on my first piece, and I only put adhesive on the bottom part of it because I'm going to need to slide the other pieces behind it. And I'm just using some glossy accents because, one, it was what I had on my desk, and two, it's just, it's a really good uh, liquid glue. So I'm just using that. And I'm gluing to the second one. You have a little bit of wiggle room, but it does dry pretty fast, which is one of the things that I like about it because I don't like it when my paper pieces are moving around on me. So here's the fifth one, and I've made sure everything is nice and glued in place. 
Now I'm going to kind of mask off with the same post-it note I used before. I'm going to mask off the top just so that I don't get any extra ink on it. And I'm going to stamp these cute candles on top. I had just gotten out of the shower, so my hair's wet. <laughs> Alright, so now I'm going to look and see how it is in my card, and I love it at this point. Um, just need to trim this edge off a little bit because it wasn't quite centered. And I'm actually probably better with an X-Acto knife than I am with a paper trimmer, so I actually end up using that when I'm not cutting just like a piece of paper in half. Um, it's kind of my design background, I guess. We cut everything with X-Acto knives there. And, you know, it works really well for me, so I just use that a lot. I have cut my finger, though, before, so I'm really careful. <laughs> so I cut down the piece to size. I inked the edges with some gold paint to kind of make it um, cohesive with the card. And then I'm sticking it on there with some foam dimensional adhesive. And I decided that I didn't want to use the Lawn Fawn sentiment that I originally had planned to. I was going to use the Sophie sentiment stamp set, stamp set because I love that set so much. But it didn't really fit with the card anymore. So I decided to go with my favorite classic messages from Hero Arts. And I use this all the time. And it's seriously way more worth the $6 that I spent on it. So I stamped it on some I or some cream cardstock. This is from Paper Tray Ink, just like the back the bases. Cut it out and kind of trimmed off the edges. Inked it with some gold paint, and then um, here's the final card. Rounded the edges and it's nice and elegant. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next week for another video.